Okay, so as we said, this session is going to be all about extra reading and reflection. So uh, I'm from the Aspiring Medics, and the Aspiring Medics is a tutoring service enabling Aspiring Medics to get into medicine. And we offer a range of services, including academic, personal statement reviews, and interview tutoring as well. So as I said, my name's Yusuf, and I'm a medical student at Oxford University. So the objectives of this session are fourfold. Firstly, we're going to understand the different types of extra reading opportunities available. Secondly, how to implement habits of extra reading. Thirdly, how you can reflect on your extra reading. And then we're gonna have a nice gentle Q&A as well, where we'll be able to answer any of your questions. So what I'd like you guys to do is please log on to Slido, whether it be on your phone or on another desktop, and uh, chuck in the code there, 929668. And what I'd like you to all do is please rate your current confidence in extra reading. And we'll be able to have a look and go from there. So at the moment, we've got a five, that's great. Excellent, so we've had a real mixture of different responses there. I'll give it one more minute. Interesting, so quite a range there. And it'll be interesting to see what the average is. So right now we've got it at 3.2 and see what it is afterwards as well that's really good thanks guys so keep using slido because we'll be referring to it on a few other polls as well i'll give it one more minute uh, for any others that's just logging on now that's really useful okay great so we're first going to understand the different types of extra reading so my first question is what value do extra reading and academic projects add to your application why do we care any thoughts? Why is it important? Why do medical tutors look for it? Does it have any relevance, do you think, for a medical student, for a doctor? Shows commitment, I like that, because they want to see if you're responsible enough to be a doctor. Reading around the subject shows additional interest. It shows genuine interest in medicine and proactive mindset. Shows commitment to medicine because you're going that extra step. Shows dedication and that you're genuinely interested. And of course, the meta is being here at this Meducate event in itself and being able to learn from and watching uh, a video if you're watching this that's recorded. That's again showing your dedication. Absolutely. And of course, academia plays a large role within medicine in terms of, for example, research as well and showing your curiosity. It also shows, as people have said, your motivation. And that's particularly important because medicine is a five or six year degree in itself and a lifelong career in which new research is, of course, always happening. The last 18 months are a testament to that. So showing that growth mindset is particularly important. Really good, guys. So it shows you've engaged in the course outside of schools. As we said, it demonstrates dedication to medicine as a career. And as we also established, medicine in itself is constantly changing and even as a doctor you have to constantly update your knowledge as well really good so once again what are some examples of extra reading that are available so we know it's useful but what are the different forms that we can make the most out of good scientific journals we've got books we've got articles very good medical journals documentaries newspapers essays novels excellent that's really good any more you, you haven't mentioned my two favourite yet. Any more suggestions for extra reading? Comics? Okay, yeah. Okay, so let's have a look. Books, articles, TV shows on Netflix, movies, again, realistic docuseries. My two favourites are podcasts that I listen to, as well as YouTube videos. I was and still am prefer watching videos as opposed to watch. Uh, reading books for example so that's another form of media that you can use as uh, extra reading and you can also have doctor and medical student reflections in themselves so you'll find lots and lots of different uh, resources available including on our aspiring medics websites on a range of free youtube videos that we've compiled on covid19 public health the nhs as well as medical science and once again you've got loads of free articles available on a range of different topics, including current affairs, medical ethics, and indeed medical science as well. So highly recommend you check them out. That's really good. And as uh, has been quite popular, 
Absolutely, there are a huge range of different books available, uh, not just non-fiction as well. And these not only include reflections from doctors, but also scientific explanations in a fun and engaging manner. And I'm sure uh, Atul Gawande, they're quite popular as well. So you can have a look at those. These are some really interesting books. That being said, and this is a common uh, question that I get asked as well, how do I stand out from the crowd when it comes down to books? But really, as we'll come down to later on, it comes down to how you can reflect on your work experience. That's particularly important. How you can reflect on your extra reading, what you can take away from it, not what you've read. It's not unique in by itself, the book that you've read. It doesn't really make a difference if you read a niche book or not. What matters is, what is your insight? And that's going to be unique to you. Think about your own personal lived and experiences, your own extra reading, your own work experience. And how can you link those constellation of different styles, if you like, together? And that's what makes it unique. As mentioned, you've also got various TV shows and movies to have a look at. And you'll find a range on Netflix. And these can range from HIV documentaries to The Surgeon's Cut to Understanding Mental Health. So you've got a huge range available uh, on the online for you. And it's literally like watching Netflix. So enjoy. There's a huge range available for you. Podcasts, as I said, one of my top two favourites. They're a fantastic way to develop new insights. And indeed, on our website, you've got a huge range when you have a look on medicine podcasts available to you. You can subscribe to these, whether it be on Spotify, whether it be on Apple Podcasts, and that's a fantastic uh, source of insight for you guys. So we've covered the different types of extra reading, and you might be thinking, well, okay, Yusuf, it's all well and good us knowing this, but how do I actually put this into practice? So how do we implement those habits of extra reading? I'll open it over to you guys. How do you implement your current uh, sources of extra reading? And what are your goals for the future when it comes down to extra reading? Quick look at BBC News every morning. Making time every day. Set short goals. Any other suggestions? So BBC Health is quite useful. The Guardian, again, is really useful. That's really good. So somebody's put, uh, they've put a Notion page full of books that they've read. That's really, really good. Uh, and it's also links to reflection as well that we'll cover a bit later on in this session. Any other insights? But that's really good. Put a podcast on a walk. Absolutely. That's what I like to do as well. Good. OK, so here are my suggestions. So one, subscribing to YouTube videos and podcasts. And the more you're able to make that process of extra reading seamless, the easier it will be for you to stay in the loop. Same could be said for Twitter and following certain people or following on LinkedIn, a range of different doctors and public health professionals, the King's Fund podcasts, for example. You can enter an essay competition or even journal, as someone quite rightly uh, is doing. They're actually reflecting on Notion. And that's particularly useful not only to log the range of extra readings that you do, but also as an opportunity to delve deeper into that topic and crystallise your thoughts to consider the clinical relevance as well as understand and critique experimental evidence as well and that idea of it critiquing and offering your own perspective is really useful in itself you could also create or uh, be involved in a medic society at school and or discussing it with your friends and this will create this idea of accountability and allow you to develop a new perspective as well as critically analyze new information and stories and in addition to that, you've also got the Aspiring Medics weekly webinars that are available, where, again, you can discuss these aspects and meet like-minded individuals. I'd highly recommend checking it out on our website, too. OK, so we've covered those two, understanding the different types of extra reading and implementing the habits of extra reading. Now, let's move on to, OK, but how do we reflect on that extra reading? And I've put out a fair few different frameworks that we can utilise. But... Over to you guys. How do you reflect on your extra reading at the moment? Journaling, great. As we mentioned, this idea of using Notion, for example, you could write it by uh, hand. You could use the digital software to help you write things down and reflect. Any other suggestions? Maybe not so on how the media, but also the framework that you use. So somebody put summarizing. Someone else put, I don't, I guess. That's an honest answer. Thanks for putting that down. Any other ideas or we can move on to how we can reflect on it? 
Okay, so I'd recommend checking out our personal statement guide and on there we've got an experience bank and what's particularly useful to do is that for all the different qualities of a doctor that the medical schools council have put forward you can use the star framework that we'll discuss in just a second so for each of these i want you to be able to really think about them and have an example so you want to have an example and this is particularly useful for your interviews not only for your personal statement in itself as well but how can you demonstrate your intellectual curiosity that's going to be important. How can you show your tendency to look for meaning? Was it a particular extra reading that you did that sparked your interest to then do a research project, whether it be a crest, an industrial cadet, an EPQ, for example, in that particular area? What did you develop from that in your independent research skills? Likewise, linking to that is ethical awareness. What was able to develop your ethical awareness? Was it in itself writing an article? Was it reading an article on the Aspiring Medics website? Whatever it is, really think about what it is and have this table that you'll find on our website that you can reflect from. So I mentioned the STAR technique, but what does it stand for? It's an acronym standing for situation, task, action, result, reflection. So with these, I want you to think about what did you learn from your extra reading? What skills were you able to develop in terms of your commitment, in terms of critical analysis, in terms of learning about a whole new discipline within medicine? It might be global health. It might be infectious disease. It might be cancer. And what did you observe in others that impacted you? Was it someone that were you listening to Anthony Fauci and it really uh, struck you the importance of misinformation, also public health and the role of potentially adopt it in the 21st century, not only as a practitioner in a traditional sense, but also as a teacher and as a way of combating misinformation. Or maybe it wasn't, maybe it was pre-COVID-19 and during it, maybe it was more down to Dr. Mike's video on fitness and the importance of uh, a healthy routine and how, once again, patient education is so important in that. So how did that impact your view of the medical profession as a whole? And what are the downsides of it, whether it be in terms of misinformation, whether it be in terms of uh, whether it be the verbal or digital abuse, that unfortunately, some healthcare professionals um, have received, whether it be due to COVID misinformation from Anthony Fauci, whether it be in terms of um, COVID anti-lockdowns, you know, you've seen that most recently with Chris Whitty, for example. So understanding and weaving in all these different disciplines together will really build your insight. Another framework to use is the Gibbs reflective cycle, which you can think about description, feelings, evaluation, analysis, conclusion, and once again, analysis. So you'll be able to find that on the Spire Medics website under personal statement guide as well. Other questions to ask yourself, you guys can read just as well as I can speak. So I'm just going to wait one minute and let you guys have a think about those questions there. OK, so the purpose of these questions are to allow you to open your mind and ask questions. That's what I'm particularly interested in you guys being able to do, ask questions. How are you able to explore things? It's not actually in that extra reading task, say, that in itself is good. It's not a checklist. It really is an opportunity to open broaden your understanding. And even if it's not something that you explicitly mention in your personal statement, it will be able to shine through in your interviews. And it will really, more than anything, forget even medicine application. From a purely cynical perspective, if this is the career that you want to do for the next six years, and actually for the next 30, 40 years, it's really important that you understand what it really entails. And I'd particularly recommend learning from those that have left the profession as a whole, whether it be Adam Kay, for example, um, and reading his book, because understanding why doctors and healthcare professionals leave the NHS is particularly important. I mean, if you're spending all this work wanting to go into this profession and there's people on the other side that are leaving it, it's worth understanding those reasons of, say, burnout, for example, and ways to prevent it whether it be understanding the strain that the NHS is under more broadly with regards to waiting lists and, and uh, on the flip side, the opportunities that arise in terms of using, for example, digital technology and AI to help alleviate uh, those burdens and concerns within the NHS as a whole. Great. So this has been really a whistle-stop tour for you guys in terms of the different types of extra reading that are available, habits of extra reading, as well as how to reflect on extra reading. 
Now, before we move on to our Q&A, just want to signpost we've got a variety of different services available at Dispiring Medics, including our Medicine Per Statement Review Service, and you can find more information on that on our website, particularly regarding line-by-line -line feedback and having that done by expert medical students, and also experiencing personalised learning in which you're able to receive analytics tailored to your medical schools that you're applying to as well. And further information can be found on our website. So, I'd like to now move on to raising your confidence now in extra reading, and then we'll be able to move lastly onto our Q&A. So that's absolutely brilliant. You've got some really high scores there. And 4.3 is, of course, a huge improvement on 3.2 as a whole as well. And again, this extra reading is a skill. It's a habit. And what I really want to focus on, on you guys is being pragmatic and acting on what we said, OK? It's all well and good us being like, ah, oh, that was a great webinar that we watched. But we need to act upon it. And the more that we can do that and integrate it into our daily practice, the better that's going to be.